What is the difference between a dynamic microphone and a condenser microphone? And which one should you choose for your home or mobile studio? Well, in this video, I'm gonna let you know. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live Today, your one-stop shop for home and mobile recording. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, consider subscribing. Now in this one, we're gonna go into three different things. We're going to explain the difference between condenser microphones and dynamic microphones. I'm then gonna jump into the pros and cons of each type so you can make the best decision. And then I'm gonna let you know if I could choose just one type of microphone, what would it be? And in fact, that's my question to you. If you're already using a microphone in your home, or mobile studio, what type of microphone are you using and would you recommend it? Drop those down in the comments. But now, let's get started. Let's start with the basics. Dynamic microphones require no additional power to operate, meaning you can plug them into almost anything. A PA system, an amplifier, an interface, a mixer. That makes them super flexible. They also are usually handheld, like this AKG D5, and they will generally pick up a less detailed audio signal. Whereas Condenser microphones require 48 volts of what is called phantom power. Now this means you need a mixer or an audio interface that actually supplies phantom power. The good news is almost all modern mixers and interfaces do have phantom power available. The other thing about condensers is that they will also usually pick up more detail, which means you're gonna get more sensitivity and you're gonna pick up more of the sound in a condenser than you would with a dynamic mic. Now, both of these types of microphones are great. So how do you determine which one is gonna be right for you? Well, there's a few variables that you need to consider before you make a decision. Number one is what you're recording. Are you recording your guitar? Are you recording your vocals? Are you recording your tambourine solos? Understanding what you'll be recording the most of will help you make a decision about which mic will work for you. Number two is the environment you'll be recording in. Now, if you're in a large open space with lots of reverberant surfaces, then maybe you might want to go for a dynamic microphone. If you're in a nicely treated studio space, a condenser microphone that has that higher detail is going to be okay for you. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Number three, what other gear do you have? Do you have a mixer or an audio interface that is going to be able to support the type of microphone? Do you have a mic input? Do you have phantom power? There are other things that you need to consider before you make your decision on your mic. And number four, you guessed it, budget. How much of your hard-earned cash are you willing to fork out on that new microphone? Before we dive into the pros and cons, if you want to check out any of my microphone recommendations, you can head over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear and check out my complete gear guide. Now I'm a pretty positive person, so let's start with the pros. And what I have here is my AKG D5 and my Shure SM57, two of my favorite dynamic microphones. So why are dynamic mics good? Well, they are reliable, they are sturdy, they are well-made. These things are solid. I've thrown these in kit bags for years and neither have actually ever missed a beat pun intended. They're also really flexible in that you can plug them into pretty much anything. I mentioned at the start, whether you've got a PA system, a guitar amplifier, a mixer, an interface, anything that provides amplification, you're going to be able to plug these in and use them. So that makes them super handy in those situations. And they can be pretty cheap. So you're looking at less than $100 or around the $100 mark for a good quality dynamic microphone. So you can get yourself started for less than $100 with a reliable mic. So what about condenser microphones? What advantages do they have? Well, condenser mics will pick up a lot of detail in your audio. So if you're recording very quiet sounds, some instruments, a quiet vocal, your condenser mic's gonna do a great job. That also becomes a con, which we'll talk about in a moment. They're also super affordable. So mid-range sets like this, this is about a $70 US set. This is the MXL 550 and 551. So it's really affordable for someone in the home studio to get started with condenser some microphones. So what are some of the downsides of our dynamic microphones? Well, the sensitivity of these, as I mentioned, can be a lot lower, meaning if you're recording very quiet sounds, you are going to struggle at times. You also don't get that same level of gain or volume going into your door or your digital audio workstation, meaning you sometimes have to turn your volume up a lot more than you would with a condenser microphone. And while you can get in at the $100 price point with a good dynamic mic, a very good dynamic mic, something like the Shure 
your SM7B can set you back $400 plus. So once you get into the really good quality dynamic mics, they start really going up in price. So what about our condenser microphones? Well, as I mentioned, they are very sensitive, which means they pick up a lot of sound. Now that can be great if you actually want to record an intimate vocal, but if you're in an untreated space or you've got a lot of background noise, it will also pick that up. So that can mean that a dynamic may be better if you're recording in a very noisy environment. The other thing is that they are a little bit more fragile. So if you drop this on a hard surface, unlike something like your dynamic microphone, it may come off second best. And I have dropped and broken some condenser microphones in the past. I've still, touch wood, never broken a dynamic microphone. And finally, they are more sensitive to things like plosives. So as you can see here, I've got a pop filter in front of my condenser microphone here. I would strongly suggest using a pop filter even in front of a dynamic microphone because you are going to avoid plosives. But your condenser, because of that sensitivity, is going to pick up more of those popping P sounds, which can actually ruin your vocals if you're not a good distance from the mic and using a pop filter. So what would I choose if I could have just one microphone in the home studio? Well, it would probably be a large diaphragm condenser, something like the AT2020, the MXL550, or the Samson CO1. These are my three go-to recommendations, all under $100 and all really great value and a great choice for the home studio. However, if you watch this video and answer those questions that are leaning towards a dynamic microphone, here's my recommendations. The AKG D5 and the Shure SM3. 57. Both of these are under $100, they're reliable, they're high quality, and I certainly recommend these, along with all of the other recommendations I have over at studiolivetoday.com slash gear, which you can head over to and check out right now. I've got two more videos linked right down below, all about home recording and home recording gear. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking or tapping on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner, and I'll see you on the next video.